I'm just this guy who fell in love with the sound of the shakuhachi. 今までなかった自由があるんですよ。それを感じさせる音楽をあの人はやったんですね。Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's episode is another re Japanese episode where I, as a Japanese person, go relearn about Japanese culture. But、uh, those people who I learn from are originally not from Japan. This episode, we are focusing on Shakuhachi, and we have a special, special guest, John Kaizan Neptune san. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining. My pleasure. Would you mind introducing yourself to the audience? Yeah, so John Kaizan Neptune. Kaizan is my Shakuhachi professional name. And I grew up in California, went to Hawaii for surfing,、mm -hmm. and ended up studying world music with a special focus on the Shakuhachi, the Japanese bamboo flute. Right. Then I started there with a Buddhist priest, but、mm -hmm. I went to Japan. First time was 1972. Wow. And I've been playing shakuhachi for more than 50 years, but not just as a performer, but also a maker and a composer as well. Shakuhachi builder. That's right. I make my own and I also sell the instrument. Wow. The reason I got connected to him is because I'm friends with、uh, his son, David Neptune. Who is a, a documentary filmmaker, and he actually made an excellent documentary about his father, John Kaizan Neptune san. Yes.、Uh, today, because I know nothing about shakuhachi, even though you know, I grew up in Japan, so I would love to ask you、uh, many questions today. Sounds good. お願いします。はい、よろしく。はい。You are based in Japan. I live in Japan. Kamogawa. Kamogawa Shi, Chiba Ken. First of all, why did you choose Kamogawa? Well,、uh, when it looked like I was going to be spending most of my, the rest of my life in Japan,、right. I wanted to be close to the ocean because、uh, I really like surfing.、Yeah. I've seen a picture of you. On a surfboard,、yeah. playing shakuhachi. So, was it just for picture purpose, or was it like, did you actually used to play <laughs> on surfboard? Well, the truth of the matter is, it was just for picture purpose. <laughs> <laughs>、right. But I actually did play a little bit,、uh -huh. and it was a little salty. <laughs> <laughs> the countryside of Japan,、uh, there was some cheaper land as a Poor musician, it's very hard to buy expensive land in Japan. But I live in beautiful rice paddies and small mountains, and、yeah. it's totally gorgeous. I've seen your place、uh, in the documentary,、mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. How did you get into shakuhachi in the first place? I grew up in San California, grew up in San Diego, and surfing was a great passion. I was、uh, decided that. I would be part of the ethnomusicology program at the、oh. University of Hawaii.、Oh, wow. It's the study of music in world culture. I was also studying Chinese philosophy,、mm. and I wanted to live in the East someplace,、uh, sort of to live what I was studying about and what I was believing. And I'm sort of the type of person、uh, that if I do something, I like to do it. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you do while you live there? Well, what better way to get into the culture and to have a connection with the people than through music?、Yeah. There's wonderful music all over the world. Right. So, it's very difficult.、Yeah. But I chose Shakuhachi because of the wonderful sound. Right. When was the first time you heard Shakuhachi's sound? I, I was, yeah, I was、uh, working in a listening library. Where people would come in and I would put the record on the turntable. I had about 12 stations that I, it was my little part time job in the music department.、Right. And there w a s always one or two turntables open. And so while I'm working, I was searching the world's traditions、mm -hmm. for a really cool instrument and a tradition because I might even go there someday.、Right. And Shakuhachi, when I first heard it on a record, Was like the low notes are like husky, almost saxophone like,、yeah. but the high notes are pure, like a flute.、Uh -huh. And then they're making these wild, breathy sounds on purpose.、Right. And I, whoa, this is spacey. I was actually playing rock drums、oh, at、okay. the time. Rock music 
to shakuhachi. Rock drumming. <laughs> That's totally a huge unrelated. Jump. Yeah. The shakuhachi was originally for meditation. Right. And I actually the, didn't know. I said right, but I actually didn't know that. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. even called an instrument, a musical instrument. It was called a tool. A tool of meditation, a way of quietness for your head and your heart. So the music itself was deliberately simplified. Like there's no regular rhythm. There's no two, two, ba, two, three, two, four. There's this expression in Japanese, ichion jobutsu. One sound enlightenment. One sound is enough to take you there. So this idea is probably not in any other kind of music in the whole world. So in terms of looking at it musically, there's no regular rhythm. One, two, three, one, two, three. There's one breath for one phrase. And then the space, the empty space between the notes is also very important. Right. Even in traditional Japanese architecture, there's a place called Tokonoma. What is beautiful about that, you know, and a, a foreigner going into that room, oh, what a great place for a bookcase. <laughs> they want to fill it in. But it's be gorgeous because it's empty. There's hardly anything there. Right. And that sort of empty space and embracing that is and what shakuhachi. the shakuhachi traditional music is all about. The shakuhachi itself came from China, like a, a around right, a, that's what I a, actually read. A thousand four hundred years ago, there was an end blown flute, something like this, but it had six holes. Okay. okay. I actually now, don't know how many holes. Ah, are there. there's only five. And almost every flute in the world has at least six holes. Yeah. When something goes to a different culture, right. quite often something gets added rather than mm -hmm. subtracted. Right. Uniquely Japanese, yeah. one hole disappeared oh, when it began end. to be played by wandering Buddhist monks. Oh, it was That's simplified. Simple. Which is very... Typically Japanese. Yeah, the essence of... Japanese like minimalism when you decided to go to Japan was it kind of scary for you I know a lot of people who would be interested in Japanese tradition and but there is always like hesitation and fear to actually jump into the unknown world uh, how did you feel when okay nothing is important then everything is okay hmm. if it doesn't have to be an exact this like this like you were comfortable with right. so i wanted to actually put myself into an uncomfortable position right so when i went there and i i, I couldn't afford an apartment that had a bath in it uh -huh. so from day two after moving to japan i'm going to the public bath right well this is something new <laughs> and also if you don't eat like japanese mm -hmm. Uh, if, if you want Western food, mm -hmm. this is very expensive. Right. If you don't live like Japanese, it's going to be more expensive. Mm -hmm. And so, but it never felt like it was bringing me down. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons I wanted to go there right, right. to have to live my yeah. philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If really. you can let go of things, mm -hmm. you know, habits that you grew up with, and it can be food, sleep, bathing. I mean, it doesn't matter. If you're flexible enough to do that, then you can be happy and you can live anywhere. Right. You come to appreciate language differences. You come right. to appreciate different kinds of food. You come, all cultures all of a right. sudden open up and you realize, you know, there's more than one way to look at the moon, you yeah. know? there's. It's, it's really wonderful. How long does it take to build one shakuhachi? Well, after you dig up the bamboo, you cure it for two years. Two years? Two years. <laughs> yeah, I can make one like in 10 days or something wow. like that. And making is really difficult. You probably have to play for at least 10 years or more before you have the expertise to tell if, how to shape the board. Wow. For somebody in my generation, most of the people, they have never played shakuhachi and in school Not even up, never played shakuhachi, they've never heard shakuhachi performed right. live. Right. Maybe during the New Year's they see it on TV once yeah. or twice. Yeah. So they may know what the instrument is, yeah. but they've never heard it performed. So, so that is unfortunate. Maybe about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Education in Japan realized that this was ridiculous and they decided to have a mandatory program 
of some kind of introduction to Japanese music. Oh, wow. When they set up during the Meiji period, when they set up the school system, they kind of based it a little bit on the European system. So you, everyone in Japan learned Western music and Japanese music was separate. Yeah, we never played taiko in school. We never really played no, shakuhachi. No, right. Harmonica とかあとリコーダーとかそういうのですもんね。Yeah. This is not interesting situation and the Ministry of Education realized that and now they're training teachers. I was actually part of a movement when they were just preparing for that. Right. I had a number of concerts for teachers where we explained about the traditional Japanese instruments. Right. So here they're asking a foreigner to help with the <laughs> Japanese education. It's like me asking you exactly. to teach me shakuhachi, right? Exactly. Because we don't know. Right. But shakuhachi is really hard. Yeah, that's what I heard. There, there is this thing called kubihuri san that means it takes three years just to learn how to shake your head. Even just making a sound is very difficult. Yeah, it's tough. You want to try? I do want to try. Okay, yes. I brought another flute just for you. Okay. We'll see. Maybe you'll be lucky and you can make a sound. I hope so. <laughs> Let's see what happens. It'll be really cool if you yeah. you have the right lips okay. for shakuhachi. Let's try it. Okay. I don't even know how to hold it. No, okay. <laughs> so, in fact, it would be better if we just start if you don't mess with the holes at all. Just hold okay. on to it like this. Okay. Okay. Uh, don't look into the flute. You look straight at the camera. <laughs> okay. Okay. And don't okay. smile either. You can't yeah. make a sound if you smile. Where do I put? I'm gonna help you because it's not obvious. Chin up, and it's right about. See, it's right about here. You have to sit it just below your teeth, right about there. Now push your lips together, but long and thin, and then you blow a little bit. Okay. A little more longer blow. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Now you try it on your own and you probably can't make a sound. You are good. All right. I'm really surprised I was able to make the sound. Yes. Yeah. Most people can't. Now yeah. you have good embouchure. What? What? <laughs> Go back with the tight lips and right about there. You can tighten it up a little more. Yeah, that's good. Tighten it Okay. Good. And if your lips are wiggling, the sound is going to wiggle too. Excellent. Excellent. I don't want to move from no, here. Yeah, let me take your picture. <laughs> now, yeah, now we can go do the back hole. Ah, it's good to see that. Okay, so just relax okay, for okay, a second. Okay. This is definitely something you need a teacher. You have to be like constantly experimenting, like the angle, it's not how you're going to blow it. <laughs> Well, look at this. And now, oh. I have no sound. Did it hardly change? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you almost can't see the difference, right? Yeah. So it's very subtle. If I were in elementary, in elementary school, and if I have to learn this, <laughs> it's going to be very stressful. So the recorder has a mouthpiece that yeah. focuses the air for you. Uh. Go. Yeah, very good, very good. Excellent, excellent, you got it. Now let's go one more note down. No, no, this one all just supports the flute. Okay. Good, now go for all the fingers. Yeah. <laughs> I I didn't want to show my excitement because I will lose it. <laughs> thank you so much for teaching. This was you're actually welcome. a lot of fun. Way to go, yeah. man! Thank you, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. So uh, if you are interested in learning about Jonsan even more, uh, his son made a great great documentary called Words Can't Go There. And if you wanna 
buy his shakuhachi. Please get in touch with uh, John-san himself. All right, thank you so thank much, you. and let's hear him play. I like to think of music as a bridge. It can take you to that nameless, timeless place. So let's go fly someplace together. <laughs> <laughs> 